Hey guys, Shashan Kalanithi here, and on this channel, I give you all the information and tutorials you need to become successful in the world of data science and data analytics. Now, as we all know, the data space is quite huge, from jobs that include being a data analyst, to being a data scientist, to a data engineer. I found out that there were ML ops engineers, there are ML engineers, and it can be difficult to navigate this world when you don't know what each of these jobs do. So I thought, okay, let's go ahead and ask people who are actually in this field what they do. As some of you may know, last week I was hanging out with a bunch of the biggest creators in data science, everyone from Kenji to Tina Huang, Luke Barus, we had Code Emporium over there, Mickey, we had Seattle Data Guy over there, uh, and a bunch of other people that you've definitely seen and heard about. And on this video, I was able to get them to explain their jobs to me in a short, concise list of four to five questions that uh, were both quick paced, but also thought out. That way you can get a good idea of what these jobs are actually about. If you guys are interested in learning more about these jobs in the future, feel free to let me know in the comment section below and I can do a longer interview with anyone that you're particularly interested in. First, let's start off with Mickey Baisley, who is an ML ops engineer. An ML ops engineer basically is the gap between a data scientist creating a model in a limited environment and making sure that that model actually makes it to production. Usually when you're developing a model, you'll create it in a limited environment, whether that be on your computer or in a cloud, uh, a section off part of your cloud infrastructure. That way you can test it out and you don't have to worry too much about externalities. And an ML ops engineer will make sure that that, that algorithm will actually get to see the light of day and it'll go end to end and work well with the business systems out there. Unlike a data engineer, a machine learning ops engineer, an ML ops engineer will specifically be working on on the machine learning part of that whole pipeline. But don't worry, we also are gonna be talking to a data engineer in this video. Without further ado, here's Mickey. All right, so Mickey, the uh, MLOps engineer, right? Yes. So uh, what is the difference between your job and that of a data scientist? Cattle mop pets. My goal is to get your model through the chute as soon as possible, you know, with no nicks and bruises so that all of you can enjoy it. All right, what uh, childhood hobby or lifetime hobby have you done that kind of relates to your current job? Pet sitting, specifically cats. All kids. right. All right, all right. And what would you say is something that irks you most about um, related to your job? Um, related to my job, uh, people who don't want to take as much time to craft a quality product or model. Like at the end, at the end of the day, it's still code. There are still things you need to do to make sure that it performs, that it's scalable. Um, and honestly, that's the mark of a good craftsman or craftswoman or craftsperson is you want to make sure you're producing the best quality thing possible. If you don't want to do that and you take shortcuts, you're signing yourself up for problems. All right, and what would you say is a great resource for uh, people wanting to learn about stuff in your field? What do you use the most? Yeah, uh, Demetria Brinkman's uh, MLOps community, uh, both Slack, they have a Slack and a YouTube component. Um, so lots of talks and uh, you know, key, uh, examples of use cases in the industry, as well as Stanford has a YouTube channel um, called ML Systems or something where they do kind of similar teardowns of uh, ML systems in industry. All right, well, thank you so much, Mickey. All right, next we'll be talking to Ben, better known as Seattle Data Guy, who is a data engineer and whose job usually constitutes making sure that data pipelines are ready to go and have clean data in them. That way data scientists can build their models and data analysts can build out dashboards, run statistics on that data. Data engineers are essential to making sure the data scientists and data analysts can actually spend time building models and analyzing the data. The data engineer is the one who makes sure that the data pipeline is ready to go. Here's the Seattle Data Guy. All right, Ben, Seattle Data Guy, the data engineer, literally has a database of shirt on him right now. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. I should probably get sponsored by AWS at some point. You wore that shirt every day. I <laughs> All right, so, um, question. What is the difference between your job as a data engineer and that of a data scientist? Yeah, uh, I mean, our, our job is mostly to focus on like kind of developing the infrastructure uh, that basically gets data from all the raw sources and puts it into some shape that data scientists can work with it. So, you know, we do a lot of like removing duplicates, cleaning data. Uh, we also often try to do things that like help integrate data. So, you know, if you're pulling data from different sources, we try to make some way that maybe you could talk to those different data sources. Um, so a lot of it's more about building that baseline that, you know, future users can use, whether it's again, data scientists, data analysts, um, product managers, a lot of people, anyone that can basically work with SQL or a SQL-like kind of um, system. Um, can kind of ask questions to it and hopefully that data that we've developed um, can help them answer it. Sweet. What lifelong hobby or habit 
did you have that uh, kind of relates to what you do today? Uh, I don't know. If, like, I, I, I love taking things apart as a kid. Um, I tried to always put it back together. didn't always succeed. But I, I think that was something where I, I loved seeing how things worked, like as a system. Um, so I think that was something that I, I, I've taken over into um, into a lot of my work, especially like, you know, consulting. A lot of times what I do is I have to come in and kind of reverse engineer what other people have kind of done. Um, because sometimes you come in and the people who built it are no longer there. And so you have to like be like, oh, how does the system work? You know, what's going on? So I think that's, that's played a big role into my kind of future of uh, what I do. What do you recommend, uh, or sorry, let me rephrase that. What is your favorite or most used a specific YouTube channel or resource for learning about your job? Yeah, I, I, there's a lot. Uh, the thing about like data engineering, there's just a lot of tools. <laughs> um, so like I, I like, uh, it's, I think it's Kahan's Data Solutions. He has a lot of great things on more like modern uh, tooling. Um, I really enjoy uh, like the Netflix, Insta or not Instagram, Netflix, Pinterest, um, Airbnb uh, blogs. Those are really interesting. If you want to like, kind of get inspired and think about larger, more complex systems. Um, and then just general documentation from whatever company you're, you're, you're currently working with tool-wise. Like if I'm looking for Snowflake advice, I'm likely going to go to Snowflake documentation or something like that. So, yeah. Sweet. And then what is uh, one person, thing that irks you related to your job? Um, I don't know. I, I'm a, I, I feel like I'm very easygoing. So there's not necessarily anything that fully uh, irks me. Obviously, there's always challenges. Um, you know, some software engineer changes something upstream and breaks all your data pipelines. And that's, that's never fun. Um, or maybe you just, you know, can't seem to get the right uh, data for your, your, your partners upstream. But, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of a middle child, so I feel like I've, I've gotten used to the playing that middle role. Sweet. Thank you so much, Ben. Have a good one. Yep. You too. Ajay, better known as Code Emporium on YouTube, check out his YouTube channel. There's a lot of great uh, videos over there. Has a job as a machine learning engineer. And a machine learning engineer is kind of similar to an ML ops engineer, except they will be more focused on the actual code of the algorithms and making sure the machine learning pipelines work end to end. Depending on the company, the definitions can change quite a bit, but a machine learning engineer will typically have stronger software development skills than a data scientist will, and will be able to help the data scientist uh, write code in their model such that the model is actually performant and works well on production systems. Here's Ajay. Hi. All right. Ajay, Code Emporium. That's uh, me. What's the difference between your job and that of a data scientist? Okay, so my job, I'm a machine learning engineer by profession, and well, with most of my work, I kind of do work and focus on building and coding machine learning pipelines, whereas, well, for a data science kind of job, it's more on the business and technical aspect of it, business side of things as well. What's a lifelong activity that you've done that relates to your current profession? I'd say, well, being a therapist myself, well, it's not, I'm not a therapist by profession, but I do see myself as the person who kind of uplifts people who are around me and try to just tackle problems, or in this case, their problems, and also explain things in their perspective so that they understand. And just my job as a machine learning engineer, I do find myself like talking to a bunch of people with different kinds of backgrounds and just trying to explain things in a way that they understand. So, yeah. What's the most visited specific site or YouTube channel for learning your job? Visited sites. So I do like reading technical blog posts, you know, machine learning and data science blog posts specifically from DoorDash and Netflix because of the way that they kind of write about using tools that we commonly use, but in very different ways that makes you think we actually can use the tools that we use every day and for like many other applications too. Sweet. A J Code Emporium. Thank you. Thank you. And representing data analysts, it's yours truly, Shashan Kalanithi, the senior data analyst. And uh, let's ask myself the same question. So first of all, how would I describe my job? So I'm a senior data analyst, and my job typically constitutes taking in requirements from a stakeholder of something, that, some phenomenon they want to know about, such as why sales might be down or something, right? And then going and checking if the data is available to us in any capacity, working with the data engineers to make sure that that data is clean and inside the pipelines we need them to be in, uh, performing whatever transformations and I need to do on that data using either SQL, Python, or a combination of the two, putting that into a dashboard and presenting that to the stakeholder in an iterative process to ensure that we have clean, good data and that that data is shown on the dashboard for the stakeholders. What is the difference between my job and that of a data scientist? Typically, I like to say that a data scientist is kind of like a data analyst on steroids. So not quite the same thing, um, but usually the analytical techniques used by data scientists are a bit more advanced. 
on the uh, at the same time, I would say that data analysts also typically tend to be a bit closer to business in the sense that they we are usually taking uh, more requirements from business than data scientists do because we're not so focused on niche problems such as uh, building models to solve very specific things. So data analysts can iterate through business requirements a bit faster than their jobs usually, uh, whereas data scientists tend to be a bit more focused on individual problems that need modeling to solve. What lifelong activity have you done that relates to your current profession? So I have quite a few, but I would say for me, it's I've always been a very analytical person. Whenever I walked into a store, whenever I walked into a um, uh, you know school or whatever, I wanted to know how the systems behind that institution worked. Uh, I didn't just assume the world worked the way it did. I've always been curious as to how the world works and why it works the way it does. So I would say uh, my insatiable curiosity is probably what uh, makes me happy as an analyst. And it's a skill, it's, it's a lifelong passion that kind of like has dovetailed into a skill that uh, is very useful for my career. What is your most visited specific YouTube channel or site for learning about your job? For me, I guess I would have to say it's going to either be uh, Geeks for Geeks because I do a lot of coding right now, and so they have a lot of stuff that's been very helpful for me over there, or Kaggle because Kaggle has full-blown analyses end-to-end -end already done in very good, clean workbooks where people explain every bit of their logic. An amazing resource if you're heavy into the world of analytics. And then favorite tools, um, I would have to say easily Python. I love coding. It's a lot of fun for me. Um, I don't like SQL as much, quite honestly, because uh, it's not really coding, and it, it, it always I always feel like I'm fighting with SQL, quite honestly. Um, it, it is problem solving, but it, it's a lot more fun to solve problems in Python, in my opinion. Outside of that, Tableau is an amazing tool. Um, it's what I use for all of my visualizations that you know I don't just quickly make in a Python graph or something, like a matplotlib graph. Um, so I'd say Tableau and Python are probably up there. If I could only have two tools, um, to do any to do analysis for the rest of my life, it would probably be those two tools. Finally, let's talk to Kenji, the head of data science at his company and a uh, data scientist by profession, about what a data scientist does. But before that, I want to show you guys this week's video sponsor, Sharpest Minds. As you guys can probably tell from this video, the world of data science is constantly fracturing and is getting increasingly larger and more complicated as it splits up into different, uh, very specific sub disciplines and. One great way to navigate these subdisciplines and to know exactly what you want to do is to do what we did in this video. What did we do in this video? We went to experts and we talked to them about what they do in their professions and we asked them very specific targeted questions. That way we could learn more about what they do and we could learn from them and from their experience. You know, the question of what did you do as a, you know, your entire life that actually has to do with your profession is something I love asking people because I find that people who are very passionate about what they do usually have there is uh, it showed up somewhere in their childhood it showed up somewhere when they were younger in something that they were constantly doing and that's what this week's sponsor sharpest minds is supposed to help you do uh, not find your passion it's supposed to help you connect with mentors that way you can get very specific questions about your career path and your career options explained if you want to know how things work stuff like that sharpest minds is home to over 400 different mentors from all kinds of walks of life and from many different companies everything from you know your uh, large tech companies to startups, to blue chip companies, all over the spectrum, both in companies and in professions. So you'll find ML people, you'll find data scientists, everything you need in the data profession. You can sign up for free and during the trial, find the perfect mentor for you. Additionally, you only pay, you don't pay upfront, you only pay through the form of an income share agreement. That way, the company's incentives are tied with your own. They only get paid if you get a job and the mentors at Sharpest Minds are heavily incentivized to help you get an actual job in the field you want. Everyone's incentives are aligned and they only make money when you do. So support the channel by supporting our sponsors, especially these really great ones that have uh, specific tools for the data audience out there. And click on the link in the description below to check out Sharpest Minds. And thank you Sharpest Minds for sponsoring this video. All right, and now on to Kenji. So you uh, are head of data science at your company. Uh, but for this video, we're going to have you play the archetype of a data scientist. So uh, what would you say your job is? So I help athletes and teams improve their performance by analyzing the data collected on them. All right. And what would you say is a, a hobby or habit you had uh, for most of your life that kind of relates to the job you currently have? So I think the biggest one is reading. So obviously I haven't had read for all of my life unless I was like some very special infant out of the womb. But in data science, you have to continually learn more. If 
field is changing quite consistently. And reading blog posts, reading research, reading books, it's a great way to keep up with, with everything and improve your skill set. Sweet. What is a YouTube channel or resource that you use to consistently learn about your job? Kaggle is amazing. Kaggle is amazing. I use it all the time to learn how to implement stuff. Um, and what is a uh, pet peeve you have within the industry or um, related to your job? Uh, so I think more my content job, something that frustrates me a little bit is when people ask me for mentorship without doing a ton of research themselves. I think that there is a certain stage you have to get to before mentorship is even useful. I mean, me telling someone who's just starting out, um, you know, giving them hands-on, whatever it might be, is a waste of my time and their time because there's so many good resources out there. Uh, once you reach a certain threshold where you're pushing the edge of, of the types of problems that you're working on, mentorship can be really valuable. But I just think that there's a certain prerequisite amount of effort that you have to put in before you really can learn from other people most effectively. All right, Kenji, thank you. And that's that. What did you guys think about this uh, format of video? It's something different that I haven't done in a while. I, I want to do a few more of these kind of like uh, not purely technical parts of the navigating the career experience in the world of data, along with continuing the technical stuff that we do on this channel. Um, the technical stuff is tremendous for helping you get a job, but I would also like to help people who have already gotten jobs because it's been over a year since I've started this channel at this point. And on my live streams, I see that people are coming in and saying, hey, I got a job. This channel is very helpful. I want to be able to help people who are already in the workforce navigate their career. So what do you guys think about this type of video? Hopefully you like it. I'm going to continue doing this largely unscripted style. So like, you know, what I'm reading, what I'm doing right now, it, it's not really scripted. I have a, a couple of uh, bullet points over here, but nothing close to a script. Um, because I, I feel like it is authentic. I hope you guys like it. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Leave a comment just saying hi. It's great for the algorithm. Uh, I love seeing it. It uh, keeps me encouraged. Uh, like the video if you haven't already done so. And I hope to see you guys later.